What's going on, everybody? It's Davey from the 80s, and you are now entering the Cinema Chop Shop, so park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button. Also, if you check the link below, you'll see a Patreon account. You click it, you can become a member. All you got to do is try recommend movies and music and trailers for me to react to. Now, with that being said, we're here today with a review for Fear Street Part 2, 1978, I believe. Now... Let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, this movie uh, basically begins by taking off exactly where the last one ended. And then we hit it with a flashback of what happens at Camp Nightwing. If you're not familiar with Camp Nightwing, is mentioned in the first episode where it was like a camp, a camp town massacre. Like basically there was a camping trip, summer camp. A bunch of people were slaughtered. And one of the, the, the lady, the main lady, the one that they called on the phone, she was one of the survivors. Her sister was killed that night. Um, so it was a really, it was a really interesting concept. So basically this episode serves as a flashback into what happens on that fateful evening, right? And synopsis, just quick, a bunch of people die at a campground. They're trying to find out why they figure out it's the witch and they're trying to find out how to reverse it and or stop it, right? That's like the easiest synopsis I could give you. Now I'm going to keep it a buck with you. This show the first and second act sort of drag. The first act really drags. Second act drags, but then picks up midway. And then that third act is fire. So the third act really carries this show all the way. Um, I'm not a fan of Ziggy's sister, Cindy. She was high key getting on my nerves the whole first half of the movie. The whole first half of the movie was Ziggy's sister uh, was talking and acting and running around. She was getting on my nerves, and I get it. You're trying to play it up. You're trying to be this person that you're not. It was obvious. I mean, it's cool, but at the same time, she was annoying the shit out of me. And I get it. Ziggy had her own problems, too, but she was kind of getting annoying, too. Like, come on, man. I get it. Your mama's drunk. Your daddy left you. But ain't no way to... It's no reason for you to be running around here acting like a little asshole. Like, that, that's just me being honest, you know? Um, but, yeah, but those people in the camp were being douches to her. So some of those people, you know, they got what they deserve, in my opinion. But, you know, that's just me. Um, one of the things that I've noticed that's really consistent about this show is the soundtrack. The soundtrack to this show is always fire. <laughs> they play some great music. You hear some Nirvana, uh, Man Who Sold the World. You hear some uh, Blue Oyster Cold, Don't Fear the Reaper. Uh, Sweet Jane, you have that. I think that's Velvet Underground. Um, you have, it, This show has a freaking... A surplus of good music right and then also the score the film score itself is good it complements the scenes really well it makes you feel like you're really watching like an 80s horror movie especially one of those camp ones you know like me and my wife were watching it and she was just like this feels like sleepaway camp and i agree it does you know it feels like friday the 13th sleepaway camp and all those other good campy 80s movies you know um the acting again reminds me of um goosebumps i mean you know I've seen people complain about it, like, oh, it feels like a teen soap opera, but, it, you know, the book's based for teens and things like that. Uh, and then most of the cast hasn't really had a huge filmography or at least really good mo movies that I would be like, yo, like, that that's that are notable to name. You know, most of these people did, like, really low-key underground parts that nobody's ever heard of, you know? Or they've done things in other countries, and I'm not familiar with the work, so I can't say if it's good or not um there are some dope um references in this movie uh carry exorcist uh it's pretty cool um the tagging on the wall if you know what i mean and then also the whole uh paint thing <laughs> you know i'm there were some really cool horror movie references you know shout out to king he was referenced in this uh, a, a bunch of times um when you watch the movie uh the one thing that got on my nerve is how dumb like plot points or dumb decisions were used in order to like carry on the plot points you know like um cindy going into the woods with the little ball-headed chick you know they her following her like that was a stupid plot point i mean that was a stupid decision just to carry along the plot point i get why they did it you know for the whole oh you the circle the character development came full cycle for this one and for that one and then also, it served as a freaking plot point for, like, you know, the ending, the third act. I'm not really going to get into details about it. 
you know, these things, they're, they're really stupid decisions that you're watching and you're no, like, no logical person would make this decision. Only you people would, you know. Um, the CGI was freaking terrible. There was like a handful of CGI kills that were fucking atrocious. They looked really bad. And it really makes me earn, this yearn for the freaking day that we go back to more practical. I, I get it. Practical effects are probably expensive. It's more pricey, but it's worth it. Because when I watch this, it's just, the CGI is just so cringy. When he was hitting her with the axe, hitting somebody with the axe in the head, it just looks so bad. Like, you just see this freaking CGI gash go, go across their face, and it's just like, you can tell it was CGI, you know? Uh, also, some of the scenes where it was like, there were kill scenes, felt a little overkill, you know? Like, it felt like it was a little excessive. Uh, if you're repeatedly hitting somebody in the chest with an axe, eventually their chest plate will cave in. I'm not expecting it to just sit there like nothing's happened this whole time. Like, that's that's a ridiculous... That, that's ridiculous of me to expect this and me watching it over and over I'm trying you're trying to get me to be like oh my god that's brutal but it gets to the point where it's so excessive you're just like yo that's kind of stupid like you know you can carry on from the scene now you know um like I said earlier the third act was good and the first and second act really dragged uh, but it ended very strongly that's the one thing about this uh, this one ended very very strong, and I'm really looking forward to, what is it, uh, 1666, uh, the third and the final part. Um, overall, like I said in my previous review, I said that they were going to have to do a, something different. They were going to have to wow me with part two, because I felt like part one was teetering on the edge of basicness. And in order to wow me, they were going to have to do something that would floor me in this one. It's sad to say it didn't floor me. So the grade of this episode or this movie, however you want to call it, is going to suffer because of it, sadly. Um, especially because you had two acts. The first and second act dragged like crazy. Uh, I get it. You're trying to move the chains. You're trying to, uh, you know, get some yards. Uh, but at the same time, you need to make it engaging you can't just make it something boring and then just pile everything in the third act in order to appease us as the audience we are going to not listen we're going to zone out we're going to play with our phones we're not going to pay attention you need to keep us engaged at all times and i feel like part two to this fear street sorry police officers um part two to fear street the fear street just didn't do it for me so here on the Cinema Chop Shop, we grade uh, movies in three ways. Either you get bodied and sent to the bowels of hell. Either you get a big, fat meh, which means you're mediocre, mid-grade, mid-range jumper, you know, all that shit. Or you get spared and I tell you how great your movie is. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like I said before, I, I spared the first one. But I said that it was going to have to wow me in order to get spared again. And this one didn't wow me, so you're getting dropped at grade level. So you are getting hit with a big, fat Meh. Not, not quite my tempo. Not impressed. But it can be better. Oh, meh. But the TV gave me the impression that we said meh. M e h. Meh. You heard it, folks. This movie is getting a meh. I really hope that Fear Street 1966 really hits uh, or else the grade will be lowered again. Let me know uh, Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or disagree, whatever the case may be. You are now exiting the Cinema Chop Shop, and I hope you guys are having a magnificent day. Adios, homies.